The 6.5 is on the road at Intel's corporate headquarters here in Silicon Valley. We are talking about everybody's favorite topic, and that is AI. Daniel, it's great to see you. I've missed you. Great to see you. We're talking AI again, and it's just amazing the depth of the conversations we can have. AI in the data center, AI on PCs, everything in between, real-life benefits to enterprises, consumers. It's great. You took the words right out of my mouth, Pat. It's been a big year. And of course, you know, we kind of, you and I love to talk about the 18 to 24 months that has changed the world, despite yeah. the fact that there's been four decades of AI algorithms <laughs> and companies have been spending more than the last decade really doing AI. But I think generative AI has created this inflection point. It's been really exciting to start to see the hype and the enthusiasm and the excitement reach us through you know, our applications, through our tools, our devices. And I think that's what we might talk a little bit about here today. That's right. It's not just about data center AI. It's also about AI PCs. Uh, it was really fun to get on Intel stage uh, at CES. I had all the biggest PC makers on there. To, it was like the big unveiling of the first AI PC. And it was fun. And at some point, though, the entire ecosystem uh, has to click in. Uh, endpoint management, uh, all the enterprise ISVs, and even things like procurement, right? Check, how do people buy? What should they be looking for? And I can't imagine two of the best people to talk about this. Uh, Carla, Mike, great to see you. Thanks Thank you. for having us. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is actually great, Pat, and you, you did actually point that out well. I shouldn't say actually, because it just was <laughs> well pointed out that we are in this era though where decisions are starting to be made. Companies are, you know, they're reflecting upon their fleets. They're thinking about, is it time to upgrade? Have we seen enough from the AI PC? Is this the moment? Everyone's excited. We all love devices. We're sort of a world, you know, we're the, you know, waiting in lines around the corner to get that new thing. But Mike, I'd love to kind of just get your reflections on the AI PC, you know, as a CTO, as a company that's helping companies make these decisions, where are you at with the AI PC? What's got you excited? Well, you know, all the years, like you said, about 24 months ago, we saw ChatGPT come to the world and AI has been around for a long time, but generative AI is definitely top of mind. Customers are rushing to it, right? You look 90 plus percent of our customers say they have an AI objective or their boards are putting an AI objective in front of them, and they're trying to figure out how do they take that to market. So, you know, the AI PC generation, 80% of that data is being generated at the edge on devices. And it has to be processed because data gravity matters. You can't wait for it to transmit back to a data center, try to process that data. So what we're seeing is our customers are looking at ways to process the data on their devices. So having these NPU type devices, being able to shift to a device or a silicon component obviously allows them to be more efficient. So I think we'll start seeing measurements around ROIs. Um, the good thing is CompuComp is, as a managed service provider, we're looking at that data today. We have processes for our managed um, platforms that we can tell them, what are you currently doing? Things like boot times, how long does the application work, cycle refreshes. And then I think the other big part of this is it, the inflection point of a Windows upgrade, right? It's a perfect time to marry AI PCs with a Windows 11 upgrade. So I think you'll see that driving a lot of this over the next few years. Yeah, I love the one-two punch, Windows 11, AI PCs. It just makes, it just makes sense. Yep. And the way that enterprises want to buy too, they want to buy it, um, they'd love to get everything done at the same time. I mean, yep. sure, they, uh, especially if, if you're looking at a, an investment that they want to optimize for four to five years. So, Correct. Carl, we've had some great conversations on the 6.5 uh, about software. And I think the last conversation we had, to be specific, was on uh, how you're enabling uh, software. Well, what I'd like to do, I'd like to narrow this, uh, this question on what are some of the benefits in software that relate to AI PCs and business operations? Great question. Um, and yes, it's great to see you in person. I know we've done a lot of the, this virtually. Um, yeah, I think the software ecosystem is just exploding right now with all things AI PC. Mike, you mentioned uh, the ability to do a lot more locally. The software's got to be able to leverage that local compute right. um, in areas such as security applications, which are very top of mind. And being able to do scans locally 
is, is one of the things that we're hearing a lot from our customers and we're engaging with the software, the security software ecosystem. Yeah. Another thing being manageability, being able to reach that device anywhere in the world, which is actually something we've done at Intel for decades. Exactly. And it keeps coming up yes. more and more. <laughs> and so the ability to, to choose where to run the workload so that the user and the enterprise and the decision makers managing the enterprise have the best, most secure experience is what's really coming to bear in software these days. I love it. Yeah, I love that you, you said that. Pat and I talk about it all the time, like, this isn't new. Like, exactly. <laughs> like you heard me talk about like AI. Like, I do love anything that kind of creates buzz. Yeah. You know, we sort of live and die for the next big mm. tech moment. And of course, they come fast and furious, and AI has accelerated that. But some of these things are new, some of these things aren't new, and some of these, maybe this inflection, Carl, to your point, it becomes the opportunity mm -hmm. that things that should have been taken advantage of Correct. by these enterprises for a long time starts to be taken advantage of. Mike, I, I want to talk about the criteria, the decision making a bit more. You know, you're evaluating different partners. Yep. You mentioned different silicon architectures, different designs. When you go to your commercial customers, if you go to them and say, here's 700 designs from three, four different silicon providers with different GPUs, MPUs, CPUs, you're just going to confuse them. And they're all technical and they're capable, but they're looking for you to help. Like, how That's are you right. thinking about that when you're, when you're taking all these different opportunities to them? Well, I mean, cost is obviously a point, right? We know, I, the article I read the other day, there was like an 800-hour inflection point is kind of the cost model that a lot of companies are looking at. Okay. So that's kind of where they're starting in that range. Um, so cost matters to Carter's point, security, right? How do we bring these security postures to the customer? Um, I read the other day, like most customers have 12, 15, 20 different security products that they use. And the problem becomes is how do you integrate all this? So what you're going to see is a shift in the mentality, even S&B enterprises, there's probably going to be three or four companies that rise in both and getting away from security point products into a platform, right? So security platforms are gonna kind of drive the next generation. So how do we push security platforms down to the PC is obviously gonna be important to them. And then obviously when we start looking at predictive analytics, machine learning, what is involved with those systems? So in, internally, obviously we do a lot of that. We're, we're evaluating our customers' data that they're feeding into us today. And we can tell them based on your system's running slow because you need to upgrade to a new system that has an MPU. Or, um, you know, here's recommendations around just startup boot times are really mm -hmm. slow. So the more, I mean, I think in an AI world, data is the king. So the more data we have, the easier we can create reflection points against that to say, here's why you want to look at these type PCs. Now, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of vendors. Everyone's using Intel as their key go-to manufacturer today, um, I think that's gonna be important for us to be able to differentiate that for our customers. So Mike, um, you know, the way that uh, IT typically uh, sets up a, a, a wave of a new fleet is they come up with a kind of a checklist, yep. right? Uh, and it's a, you know, and you're providing value too, which is, hey, here, here's what we think it should be, here are their requirements, because yep. you know, you're adding, adding value along the way. Yep. Invariably, uh, particularly, you know, the higher the level you get is the question about return on investment, yep. right? I mean, that's for everything that gets spent, uh, any type of major purchase. And I'm curious, uh, ROI specifically for AI PCs, what are kind of your early thoughts on, on payback? You already talked about, you know, maybe the expected price point, maybe it's yep. 800, you know, I'm seeing right now, thousand dollars yep. right is is kind of that that added expense for for AI PCs um, but um, what are what are your your current conversations uh, like on ROI so so we're looking at it from a workforce perspective and you're right right if we're starting to integrate things like copilots and other applications now there's an additional cost to pay for software so how do you show an ROI if I push out a copilot PC with a AI and, and integrate it and how do I justify that additional 20, 25 hours ahead? You got to look at what that productivity returns. So we collect all those data points. Today, we can say, hey, based on, and, and AI PCs obviously are newer to the market, so we don't have a lot of data points yet from our customer base. I think over time, that's going to grow. But we're looking at things like, what is your productivity increase or decrease? 
depending on how you look at it, for our customers. Like today, we could say we see a 10% productivity decrease because you're doing this, where if we integrated or upgraded your fleet, you could increase your productivity. So we're measuring those type of statistics to be able to say, if it takes you 10 minutes to write an email and AI can do it in two, there's productivity we return back to you where you can go focus on something else. And I think the big shift has also become, it's less about cost, per, you know, when I was in IT, it was always about how do I reduce cost. Right. Today, it's about how do I generate revenue. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think the measurement there exactly. is, okay, I'm not paying for you to do something, but you're generating because now you're more efficient. You have more time to go focus on making the company money. That's where I think the return on investment becomes is because now instead of taking six hours a day doing this, you take two and I can go focus on new tasks. Yeah, and I'm really, I'm really interested. I mean, the software, the the on-device AI software, is moving so quickly. Yep. I'm hearing, you know, we talk to enterprises too, mm -hmm. and and what they're looking at as well from the the cloud-based AI services is they actually see potential cost reduction possibilities mm -hmm. by keeping it all on their systems yep. and being able to do uh, some very uh, important types uh, of applications. Uh, there's files on, on the yep. PC and the ability to query those in an intelligent manner without actually having to go up to the cloud. And what I'm seeing is customers who, who do on-device and cloud finding it more of a hybrid type of opportunity yep. where um, they do as much as they can on the PC yep. uh, and then they farm out uh, the rest uh, to the cloud. So it's, it's, all, it's a really constantly moving target across all, all, all the ISVs. And there's gonna be a little bit of push and pull because um, all this investment into the NPU on this device actually saves the cloud providers money yeah. because they can do more of it on here. Yeah. Oh, it, it moves the economics around. Yes. And so companies, of course, are having that push and pull and have for some time about where does a workload belong? Where right. should that data, does that data need to all be processed? And then does it ultimately need to be sent back to the cloud? And of course, one of the things we have to all accept, the exponential growth of data isn't going to slow. It's only right. going to get bigger. And these right. apps get bigger, the amount of data gets bigger, what we're going to want to process, what we're going to want to do. And Carla, that takes me very nicely. Thank you, Pat. To <laughs> kind of the last question. Yeah, thank you. Put a Tee yeah. me up. Can you imagine me hitting a golf ball? It's terrible, <laughs> terrible to see. Um, but I wrote a book called Future Proof. I want to think about future proof mm -hmm. and how to future proof your investment. We talked about ROI. We talked about the investment. People buying mm -hmm. AI PCs, it's about figuring out the right hardware. Mm -hmm. It's about identifying those right software applications that both of you talked about. Yep. Sort of, how are you thinking about and how are you enabling your partners, customers to future proof with the AI PC? Yeah, great question. I was, uh, I was going to. I was going to refer to a comment you just just made. Uh, a lot of the conversations we have with our ISV partners are precisely early on where things need to run. Yes. Across CPU, GPU, MPU, plus the hybrid component on cloud. That is probably the number one decision that we face with our ISV partners a year or two out from product launches right. and their application launches as well, because that dictates a lot of the benefits that we see downstream. Yep. And this is moving very fast. Yes. And it is beautiful to see the ROI in terms of not just what you're gonna reduce, but on the but the other way around. How are you freeing freeing up your employee base to do more creative, strategic things right. that are gonna bring in that extra source of revenue? Yep. And so that's a big part of how the ROI is playing out currently with a lot of our ISV partners. Um, but back to, to the question you were posing, Daniel. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of the future proofing in, in how we're testing how many applications can be loaded up on MPU, how many applications can be loaded up on GPU. And that is sending a lot of measured early uh, data back to uh, managed service providers, large enterprises to say, I really need to step up because we all know with data exploding, with more apps utilizing MPU, GPU and, MP and CPU, you don't want to be left behind. Uh, the users are also going to start demanding this. Right. They're already seeing the benefits of AI helping them with mundane tasks. Yep. And the fear of, is this going to take parts of my job away, is starting to be replaced with, oh my gosh, I can do so much more now. Right. Yeah. I, I think the statistics we've seen is probably the number one 
issue is password resets. So if you can have an intelligent gen- <laughs> Interesting. Hey, well, think about it. It's the reality. No, I know it's not yeah. sexy, um, but it's like, it's, it, that's the reality. Yeah. That's probably one Day of the bigger day. challenges. And inside, you know, CompuComp, we built a gen AI chatbot, which we can do stuff like that. We can pull in service tickets. We can do password resets. We can ask, how's my PC running today? And make recommendations. So they're the type of things where if, to Carter's point, if we can make our workforce more efficient, take away those mundane tasks. I, I saw a study one day, like two hours a day spent administratively. Yeah. If we can eliminate some of that, make them more productive, that's huge. I'm in. Cool. Yeah, Mike, I think you've done a nice job of previewing another show that we need to do down the line to talk about how this moves from device to edge to cloud to really enable enterprises to maximize the value of their data. But Correct. We have to go. So Carla, <laughs> Mike, I want to thank you both so much for taking the time here. Very interesting conversation. Let's keep on this topic. Awesome. Thank you so Sounds much. That's great. And thank, thank you. you for joining us for this 6-5 on the road. We're here at Intel headquarters. Another great conversation about Intel AI, PCs, and what these two companies, CompuCom and Intel, are doing. Stay with us for more, but we got to go. See you all later.